guys, this is Kate from Kate's Crafting Corner. It is June, is it the 10th, I think? Yeah, June the 10th, and I am here to do an update video. Um, I wasn't gonna do one this week, because if I was, I was gonna have it up by now. Um, but then I remembered that tomorrow is the start of the UEFA um, European Championship for soccer, which is why I'm wearing my soccer jersey. This is from Miroslav Klose, Germany. I always support Germany. Um, and I had some plans for that, and because I had forgotten until after I filmed my last video that it was starting, I wanted to do a kind of like preview video because um, I like to do certain things during world tournament type of situations. So like during the Olympics, during the FIFA World Cup, and now the European. Even though it's just like Europe, it's not all of um, it's not all of the world. I still like to uh, just do certain things. So. I decided to film this update video, so I only have two cross stitch projects I worked on. Then I'll give you a kind of update on the quilt I'm making, and um, then we will get into some plans and some acquisitions and a few other things. So I'm not sure this might end up being longer than I had anticipated, but um, let's just get into it. So. First thing I wanted to say is I have completed two whip go squares, one for this month and then one for a past month that I hadn't finished. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that right now. The other thing is I had forgotten I bought this um, lap stand off, I think Etsy, like a couple years ago. And I bought it so that on my lunch breaks at work I could... Um, put it on the table and do two-handed stitching which is so much faster and when I stopped working I forgot I had it until um like this week when I saw it again and I was like oh I bet I could be doing two-handed stitching so much faster here and I was able to and actually this chair is at just about the perfect height for this um I do wish I could get it maybe an inch higher but it's pretty good so no real complaints but so I left my project on here, and that is my June Cottage from um, Country Cottage Needleworks. And I did, I've done about, yeah, 1,400 stitches on this. So I am really super excited about that. And, um, yeah. I'd only done one shade of brown in the roof and a little bit on four windows. And so all, oh, I did actually do this. I had done that before. But so everything else is completely new. And it went really fast with the two-handed stitching. And I am really happy. I'm hoping to be able to finish this real soon. So that is my first update. Um... My second one is I completed the 700 stitches I needed to finish my whip, my thousand stitches for WhipGo on um, the World Wonder map. So this is what it will look like when it's done. I have to insert a picture. And this is what it looked like when I started. And here it is now, which means I made some pretty decent progress, about 800 stitches, I think. Um, so I am really happy with what I did. I mean, there's still, this one has close to 25, I mean, close to 2.5 million stitches. So far, far to go. I'm not even at 0.1% complete. But it was really nice to work on, and it went a lot faster than I expected. I think I did 750 stitches on one day, and then I 
did 50 more stitches to get to 800. And so it went really fast and I, I'm really looking forward to working on this again. I, I actually really do like this 25 count um, magic guide, right? My only complaint is I do wish they were 10 by 10 squares instead of 20 by 20, but I really like this fabric for stitching. Like, um, it's a good mix between being too stiff and too, um, flimsy. The, like, the, the, <laughs> the fabric lines, <laughs> I don't know, um, they don't move around, so you don't worry about slip stitches, which is really important when doing one over one on even weave. Um, but at the same time, it's not like super stiff like some Ada's are. So I really enjoy this fabric. So those are the two projects I've worked on. Um, I did finally decide which of my twisted band samplers I will be doing. And that is the first one I started um, with the DMC. I, so I put it on my Q-snap and it's all ready to go. I looked at what I needed to do here and I'm super excited. So I think that I think I'll still have to do some of the crosses of the next band to finish off the thousand stitches, but I should be able to finish this specialty band right here. And we are getting close to the corner of the design, which means it will be as wide as it will go. It's still really long, so it'll still um, be some good amount of stitching, but I'm I'm really excited to work on this again. Um, I think that's the only preview I wanted to talk about that's not related to the Euros. I'm sorry, I have this on a not so stable base this time. That was a mistake that I will not repeat next time. <laughs> But, um, I don't want to restart filming. Um, I showed you guys this one square that I did for my quilt last time. Um, it's folded up so it's got creases because I took it to the store with me. But, so what I decided to do is assembly line, um, some squares now. So I'm doing 20 at a time and so this one still needs one more layer around to complete it but I so I've been working on some squares and um, so I so I am hoping to finish this batch of squares today because I still need to do 20 more and then I need to start being able to assemble them. So, um, here, uh, as you can see, they're all different, but they're all like the same family color groups. And I'm trying really hard to make sure that no f same fabric design is on the same square. So... It's been so much fun to do, and it's going so much faster now that I'm doing it. Um, what that is, is you basically do, so I first started and I did like 20 of these two together, and then I added this one to all of them, and then I added this one to all of them, the same size. So that's um, what I am doing. I found this fabric at Joann's that I think... I think I'm going to use as a border for the quilt, the whole quilt itself. Um, I did the math and I can't have too big of a border or it won't fit the batting. So it's only going to be about 
maybe three inches, two and a half to three inches all the way around. Um, but I think it will be really nice to have a border. And then I bought this, oops, this, um, this is a hundred and eight inch wide, so it's an extra wide, just plain navy blue, and this will be the backing fabric. Um, and then what I like to do for binding is to make my binding off the backing, so then I don't have to go through and add a binding strip. It's it's easier, it's faster, and I like the look of it. So um, that is my plan with that. I don't know that I'm going to be able to do the quilting before our anniversary. Um, yeah. It's... <laughs> um, the throat space in my sewing machine is just so small to maneuver a full quilt. So, <sighs> we'll see. Um... I don't know if it'll happen, but one thing I'm possibly will be getting as an anniversary present is a new sewing machine, and if so, one with a bigger throat. And so if that's what I get, and I don't know that it will be, um, then I would prefer to do the quilting on that. So I might just assemble it, the topping, and see what happens. And I mean, if not, I can push it through and just gets messy with a quilt this big, um, if that makes sense. So that is the quilt. Let me move this to the side to make more room. Okay. Next. Um, let's talk one more thing about cross-stitching. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to decide if I should, let's just actually, let's finish up the, the fabric stuff. I got some fabric. <laughs> so I thought I would share it with you guys. Um. Joanne's had cotton sale, and um, so I got some fabric. And then the other thing I wanted to show you guys is, because um, I want to start making bags again, and um, so I learned, this is not one I made, this is actually one I purchased, but this is about the same size as my knitting bags. And I wanted to show you guys that actually you guys can use bags like this for cross stitch as well. And, um, I put in a project in my 8-inch Q-snap. So, I mean, you can leave a project on an 8-inch Q-snap, fit it in here, and so this is a Mirabilia, so the whole thing fits in here. I mean, I've got my threads, I've got my bead pack in here, um, the project that it was. So the whole thing does actually fit in one of these bags. So even if you guys are on Etsy and you just look at some knitting bags, there's a good chance if you see some cute ones that your cross stitch projects will totally be able to fit in here. Um, so that's one thing to consider when looking at bags on Etsy. And even for me going forward, I'm, I might start using some of these for um, cross stitching. I just wanted to see if it would work and I mean like it completely completely works and then you just zip it up it's a nice cute size got the handle I really like it so the times it won't work is if you've got like a, a paper um, that you don't want to fold up pattern so anyways just food for thought <laughs> now to share some okay I actually got this off Etsy like a month or two ago I think I did show you guys, but this is a Beauty and the Beast fabric. I think that's so cute, and it'll make really cute bags. And 
this is a Peter Pan one. Same thing. It's so super cute. This is one I just like. I just like it. And this. Again, I just liked it. A nice patriotic one. I think I got this. Or I thought I got this. Um, in the remnants bin, but maybe not. A Christmas mitten one. So cute. Same kind of color family. And same here. I just really like the coloring of this one. Um, this is a patriotic one. So, I really like this one. This is just some blue flowers that I thought was pretty. This is one that I've had before, but I really like this fabric. And so, while it was on sale, I got more. And then, all of the character license were on sale. Like, a third of the price or something like that. I think they were like $8. And normally they're like 13 So these I'm really excited about. And this is a Harry Potter one. And I just think it's so pretty with the two different um, teal colors and the gold accents. Then I thought this one was so cute. It's all of the houses. But I thought I like this style. I think that's so super cute. And this is a Hogwarts one. And I like that. And then this is my last Harry Potter one. And it's a um, the Deathly Hollows. Then I have a couple patriotic ones so I love red trucks old vintage red trucks and this has got a dog I'm so cute then this one has the different states and I thought that was really fun um Then this one I thought was just so cute. Fashion ladies, I guess. Boss ladies. We have a Mickey and Minnie one. A Cruella de Vil one, which I think is so fun. A Scooby-Doo one, which I was looking at, and the only character not in here is Freddy, which I think is really weird. Why would you include everyone but Freddy? Like, if you were leaving out, out maybe even Daphne, it would make more sense. But to just leave out one character is weird, and I didn't realize that until after I bought it, but I still think it's cute. I love Scooby-Doo. And the final one I bought... I bought all that remained of this, and I don't know if it will work, but this is so cute. If there's enough fabric here for the backing of um, my husband's youngest granddaughter's quilt, I bought a mermaid fabric for that, um, a jelly roll. And I thought if this is enough fabric, that would be such a cute backing for her. So I really like it. Um, so that's the fabric. About a third of those was bought before this past weekend. I just hadn't shown them, so I just thought I would show them all together. Um, then they also had their paper punches on sale. So I got these to make floss tags. 
So, um, I got this Dear Jane, um, cart, like, um, Well, printed cardstock, and people use it for scrapbooking a lot of times. So I took out one page and I made some floss cards with them, and that was really fun to do. And I managed to get thirty-five from a single page. I need to try them out to see if they're too flimsy and if I'm going to need to back the pages. I'm really hoping not because I don't really want to mess with glue. It's just I don't like it. So I'm hoping, but it might be a little too flimsy. I don't know. We'll see. But, um... I'm going to get some clasp rings off of Amazon. I think I found a listing for 100 for like $7. So then I am going I'm going to use I'm going to start using these with my projects instead of um instead of other things. So that's really was fun. So I bought this one for the shape and this one to cut out the rings. And then I, I just a regular whole bunch. The other thing that you can do is you can take old cards that you've received. And you could use them to make little floss cards. So I got this thinking of you card. And so you can even see that it is like a thinking of you and then in it there was a bunch of flowers and so it just makes really cute little um little floss floss tags and then those are so fun um this was an easter one he has risen it had a little chick. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. This chick's butt got cut out. <laughs> and then, um, just another card that just had some, like, Japanese-style flowers on it. And so... I think they're really cute. I really like them. And it's a great way to repurpose cards um, that you might receive. Um, so, yeah. I just wanted to share that with you guys something new that I'm doing um I may list some super cheap on Etsy I don't know um like 20 for five dollars or something like that I don't know with the ring or maybe I'll throw in like five with a bag or things like that if I sell bags again <laughs> you just need to start making them but yeah, I thought I would share that with you guys. And you can find a ton of these kind of paper um, cardstock books at your local stores. And um, yeah, so there's that. Now let's talk about the UEFA's um, European Soccer Tournament. And um so super excited about it because I used to be hardcore into soccer like super hardcore I woke up at 6 a.m. every Saturday to watch Bayern Munich and um, I spent hours and hours and hours researching 
I kept lists of player stats. I was so, so into it. Um, and then my team sold my favorite player to a rival club. Tony Kroos was sold to Real Madrid, and it left me absolutely completely devastated. And that's when I realized I was too emotionally invested. <laughs> I had to um, take a step back. And it has been a step back for seven years now. Um, I've tried a few times to get into it again, but um, it's just, it's hard when you think that your club has basically made the worst decision ever. Um, you continue to think that it has proven to be the worst decision ever considering the career trajectory that that player has experienced. He has won a number of Champions League trophies and players that you decided to keep and raise their salaries instead did not prove out to be smart investments. And that was what you were saying on all the message boards the whole time and people were telling you you were wrong and it turns out you were right and you feel vindicated for being right but also it's still heartbreaking because I am not a supporter of Real Madrid. They're just not my team. And I tried to watch a few matches. I just couldn't get into it. They are my sister's favorite team and so I tried real hard. <laughs> I just couldn't. They had one player I liked, Tony Kroos, and that was it. Um, and then you're still mad at your own team because they did this stupid thing, in your opinion. And it sucks because there were a lot of players I really liked on that team, Bayern Munich. And including my other favorite player, Manuel Neuer. Um, and... The realization that I have basically missed his entire career, and he is, in my opinion, the world's best goalkeeper ever, and I missed watching all that because I was basically throwing a seven-year-old temper tantrum, a seven-year-long temper tantrum, because they did something stupid and still, in my opinion, <laughs> is kind of ridiculous, and I know that. And so I have been wanting to get into it again. And so with the Euros coming, and basically, I'm going to watch them again. <laughs> and um, the German team is basically unrecognizable to me. I watched, I watched um, their past two friendly matches that they had this month. And I think I only recognized max four players in the starting lineup. And so I just have to remind myself when I started watching this sport, everyone was new to me then too. So um, that's okay. So my last attempt to start watching again was in 2018 with the World Cup in which I made some spreads for my bullet journal. And unfortunately, I don't have have pictures of those spreads and I cannot find that bullet journal to show you guys because I plan on today making those spreads and I've decided to just use this as my collections journal so I'm going to be putting in um, the World Cup and then cross stitching challenges that I'm trying to track and instead of using this as like an everyday um, planner because I bought the happy planner I will just be using this for collections um so I'm excited about that I did go to my floss tube video from 2018 and I screenshotted some pictures some stills from that and I'll insert those to kind of show you guys what I'm going to be doing here but basically I am going to be making a page for a each group in this tournament and there are six groups um, each group has four teams and from that the top two places will progress to the next level and then um, 
two third place teams will progress to the next level. And so what I did last time was I made a table with the four teams to at the end record their numbers of wins, draws, and losses. For each win, your team gets three points. For each draw, your team gets one point and losses get no points. So you can have a maximum of nine points and a minimum of zero. <laughs> um, so below that, I had um, each of the matches. So I put the date and the time of the match in my time zone. Then I would put the team and then two empty boxes and then the other team and I used that to record the scores and I only like to record the scores after I watch the game so I know which games I have to watch and things like that and then below that I have on one side my prediction of the standings for the group and then on the other side the actual standings of how they came out. So at, um, after you get through all of that, you go into the elimination stage of the tournament. And so um, eight, in the World Cup, it's more teams progress out of it. But in the Euros, only eight, no, hang on. Um, <laughs> I just heard my husband talking to one of the dogs. That was so funny. Told him to stop being so selfish. <laughs> okay, 6 times 2 is 12 plus... 6 times 2 is 12 plus 2... Hang on, I need to think about this for a minute. <laughs> Anyways. I think 16 teams go on. I think 16 teams move on. I could be wrong. I could definitely be wrong about this, but I think 16 teams move on. So maybe then it's four third place teams move on. Anyways, so from 16, you get, if it's 16, you get eight matches of two teams versus each other. And then after that, eight teams progress, so then it's four games, and then four teams progress from that and so on and so forth and so I then um, I make a page with those matches and then I have the final page um so I will put in some pictures of what all those spreads will look like but so I'm gonna work on that today probably while editing the video because um, it's pretty brainless to do and um, I do have a reason for talking about that in a floss tube video. And the reason is I like to have a project that I work on during international tournaments. Um, and it is Around the World in 80 Stitches, which was a stitch along, stitch along from Papillion Creations. It was released in 2012. And I started it when the first part was released. It was my first ever stitch along. It's the first ever project. I had to pick out all the colors by myself and all of that. Um, so back then I was still pretty new and for some reason I decided to put duct tape on my project which is has proven to be a massive mess. So this one has since been abandoned. The fabric is also dirty. Um, there's got duct tape on it and so I I won't have any framing margin or anything so that's why this one had to be abandoned. I'm not even sure there's enough fabric left to be able to stitch the whole piece. Um, so then I decided to start it again and this was po possibly in 2018 that I restarted this and here's where I got to. And I will be once again restarting this project and abandoning this one because this is some of that 
super cheap MG textile. And um, the stitches are definitely more rectangles than squares. And the fabric isn't very nice to work with. And it's just, it leaves me not really wanting to work on this project. And I just decided rather than agonizing over that, I would just bite the bullet and restart it for this World Cup. Not World Cup, that is in a year <laughs> for this Euros. So I am still using the same color palette that I chose from the very beginning because I kind of like that whole nostalgia thing. This is what I originally chose. And so even though I have a larger, well now I have the full set of DMC and back then I didn't. I just worked with what I had at the time. Um, so even though I have more that I can choose from, I'm going to stick with this. For one thing, I do actually really like the colors together. I really do think that this was a, um, let me just fold it up so I can hold it a little closer. I really do think that these colors look nice together. It makes me happy. So I want to continue with these colors. I have one day to decide if I am going to stick with the fabric that I've chosen for this restart. And that is, I have this coffee tea dyed fabric. And so I'm trying to decide that I dyed myself. I'm trying to decide if I want to go with this or if I just want to do plain fabric again. So, um, I really don't know. I really don't know what I want to do. I think I'm going to restart it on this one. But you know what? <laughs> I've started this project. This will be my third time. If I don't like it on this fabric... This is a project I will restart again because once you've restarted it three times, you might as well just keep going for it until you find what you absolutely do love. So, um, I'm going to go check my master set of DMCs and see if I have any full skeins of any of these colors. And then I will be putting it on some of these rings that I made to try out that whole system. And I am just really excited to start this. The uh, um, So I will be working on this while watching games. I also have to finish at least the quilt top um, by the 23rd. So I will need to work on that while watching games as well. However, the first games of the day start at 6 a.m. and my husband is still sleeping at that time obviously <laughs> and um well I guess that's not really an obviously but he is and so I need to have something quiet to work on and so that's cross stitch and once I finish that quilt top then um then I still need something to work on so yeah so that's my plan for that I do also I did also want to have one knitting project that I can work on during that whole thing um, because sometimes I just need something more brainless and so I decided for that I would start my nephew's socks that I'm making for Christmas he is German lives in Germany and so that's how I'm tying it into an international theme. Um, I am hoping to be able to make two pairs of socks out of one skein. Not sure I'll be able to. Um, but I'm going to try. I don't think I have any yarn that would match this for contrast. Gilts, toes, and cuffs. So anyways. Um... I will be, so, okay, so tomorrow is when the tournament begins, and there's only one game tomorrow, 
So my plan is during the first half, I will cast on, I, I will either cast on a pair, the pair of socks or I will start the cross stitch project. And then during the second half, I will do the opposite one. So both of them will be started during that first match. And um, after that, I will just work on whichever one I'm feeling like at the moment. But I'm really, really super excited um, to be working on this and doing this. I think it will be really nice to be able to get back into soccer. I've missed it. I've gone through my... Um, uh, in my planner and written the times of all the matches. I wrote Germany's matches in red so that I definitely don't miss those. And I'm just really super excited to to um get into the sport again. Um and also to work on this again. I love specialty stitches. I just don't work on them very much because you have to focus on them a little bit more. Look at this. Even the beads that... These are just Toho beads, right? I think. That I just picked up at the time from my local Michaels. I was living in Fresno even back then, so it was way long ago. And I, I still just really like how all of these colors play together. I would say if I were to change anything, it would be one of my reds because they are very similar to each other. Um, and this one's that bright 666, and this one is a more it's a darker 321, but they're still very similar. But I think I'm just going to leave it. Yeah. When I started this project, sorry, and it was a mystery, <laughs> I am going to admit something stupid. I thought the whole thing would just be made up of these hearts. And so I was just expecting like 24 parts of hearts. <laughs> And then they started coming out. The next part was this one. And I was like, well, those aren't hearts. And then it kept going. And so, um, there are some, like, hardanger. And in the pattern, these black ones are supposed to be white. But I liked how they looked in black. And so, yeah. Anyways, I'm really super excited about that. And um, that's all. So I will talk to you guys in a week. And bye.